Morning. Morning. Sunburn. Day four, we wake up sick. Mm. My throat is freaking sore. Me too, dude. And we've got a music festival today. Get her, eh? Hey, we. Sunburn. Get her, eh? Hey, we don't let her beat on dad like that. Mm -mm. Those are my lips. <laughs> hey, we. Shoo. <laughs> smell that, smell worse than Caitlin's breath. <laughs> Almost as bad, anyway. They're out there, baby. Come on, girl. Come on, girls. About time your mom walks you. What, eight o'clock? No. Trying to get some tacos. We gotta go to the taco truck and get some breakfast. Baby. What are you doing? Number one or number two? Man, I'm gonna get in line. Going in, there's no line. I'm just playing. Going in, there's no line. <laughs> What's up? Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Uh, number one or number two? Hey, we're leaving. We're gonna get tacos. You want anything? You want anything? I'm hoping this coffee does the trick, man. It helps me use the bathroom. Backed up? Does that happen when you travel? probiotics have been working. For Does that happen when you travel? No. I don't know what's going on. I'm on a yogurt pretzel diet because Caleb won't take me to get breakfast. They're melted and they're all stuck together. <laughs> now he's going back to the bathroom. What's the plan for today? Well, we're going to bike today for about an hour. And then, at starting at 2 o'clock, the On Earth music festival starts. There'll be some singing, music going on, people sharing, testimony, and about recovery and whatnot. It's going to be good. Yummy. Huh? Yummy. You will. Spiritual journaler, Tom Shanahan. Great. That, have you been reading his uh, blogs? Those, that's good stuff. Anyways, this is a nice uh, try outfit here. Very thankful for Sally. Okay. Boom. First time we've uh, been on a bike since trip. First time we've been on a bike since our honeymoon, and the first time we've ever used clip-ins, so this is going to be interesting. Boom! Yeah! Boom! Woo! Woo! Two, baby. Hi, we come Dad. by here. We come by here yesterday. And that guy was talking about snapping turtles and cotton mouth. And then we seen the sign says no jumping from the bridge. So we was like, now we gotta do it.
I'm ready to bike, this, bike and run this thing. I thought I'd be a little bit sore after yesterday's run. You know, between yeah, running and, and then yeah. breaking and... Caitlin and Caleb McCoy, give it up for them. They're marathon runners. They're set free from addiction. They uh, they have a ministry called Res Hope um, over in Cherokee, North Carolina. It's all, also going to be nationwide one day. And uh, they uh, they just bring a, yeah you receive that amen come on they uh, they bring awareness to recovery and hope on the reservations they're part of the Cherokee Native Americans and uh, we just absolutely love them and uh, so I'm gonna pass y'all the mic guys all right y'all give them a give them a warm welcome man I'm just so blessed and filled with so much joy i was listening um to the worship praise and worship earlier when steven and uh camilla was singing and just looking out at everybody and i've been real emotional today and i and i did i just i started crying just to see so many people jumping up and down and dancing and, and praising and smiling and just being filled filled with the spirit it, it brings me to tears. So I'm just, I, I thank you guys. You know, I'm honored to be here to be able to share what me and my amazing husband are doing and uh, what God's been doing in our lives. Because it's all Him. So before we even get started, let's let's give the Lord a, a praise right now. Woo! You know, if you would have told me a little over two years ago that I was going to be sitting in East Texas with my shoes off, praising and worshiping. I would have told you you was crazy and you've lost your mind. I had went to a rehab center and it was uh, they was having church exactly what's going on here tonight. People was jumping up praising just the joy of the Lord was um, just powerful that night. And I remember it was my first day in that rehab and uh, I was just looking around at everybody and I was like, they've lost their minds. And, and, so, and so the next day I packed my bags and left. Over the past three months, we've spoke to around 3,000 students, high school students. We just got married April 20th, 420. <laughs> Go figure. Bobby and Hannah, they sang a song for us talking about new seasons, right? And I cry every time I hear them sing it now, but <laughs> it's just, it's so true. You know how God takes us through different seasons and uh, he, you know, he, he saved us from from the darkness, that season of darkness and, and hopelessness. Now we're out here in East Texas running in the 90 degree weather heat, but turning some Jesus up with you guys. Like I was saying, um, you know, if you'd have told me I'd be sitting where I am today, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. My dad was diagnosed with um, terminal cancer and they gave him six months to live. My dad gets sick. I dive deeper and deeper into my addiction. Um, he, was, he was prescribed pain medication for his cancer. I moved into the house with him thinking that I was going to take care of him and my stinking thinking. And uh, it got to the point where I was I was basically bullying my dad and I was making him give, give me his medication. This man is my, my hero. He's everything to me, right? So I'm watching my dad wither away. Uh, I'm taking, sneaking into his, uh, his medicine cabinet, into his safe, getting all his medications, taking them and everything. And just looking back though, looking at how God's like been working in my life and, and when I look back now and see like that was God at different times in my life, um, he, he finally found out the game was up. He called me downstairs and he was like, son, uh, I know you've been taking my checks. I know you've been getting my medication. And I, I thought he was going to kick me out right then, which he had every right to. He had every right to. But he broke down and just started crying. You know, I... <laughs> You think it gets easier, and then you just never know when it's really going to hit you. God is so good. So, um, I'm standing here looking at my dad. He's sitting in his recliner, and I can see it just vivid right now. And uh, he's like, I love you, son. And it was like God speaking to me right then in that moment. And I was like, I want to go pack my bags. And he's like, I don't want you to pack your bags. I want you to get help. I love you. I want to see you get better. And he used to always, um, 
we wasn't a, uh, like I said, we wasn't a religious family. We didn't grow up in the church. Didn't have a relationship with the Lord, but he would always speak things over me. Like, remember your name, son. Go look at your go look at your name in the Bible. Look look who he was. Look who Caleb was in the Bible. I never done that. But uh, I remember um, he hung on for three years, and the nurses asked him. I gave him six months to live. He fought for three years. And right before he passes away, um, they asked him, like, why are you fighting so hard? Like, you're tough. What, what is it you're hanging on for? And he said, I want to see my son get sober. He's laying on his deathbed, and uh, he's in a hospice room, and I'm standing by his bedside. He calls me, the only person he wanted to speak to. He calls me in there, and I'm standing beside his bed. I'm holding his hand. I'm sweating. Sweat's dripping off my forehead, down my nose, because I'm withdrawing. All I can think about is the drug. All I can think, all I can think about is all my life could, you know, consisted of. Was I, and so my dad's standing here talking to me, laying in the bed talking to me. And uh, he's like, son, I'm, I'm not worried about you. You're going to come out of this. You're going to do something great for our family, for our people, for our community. He said, remember your name. Remember your name. And uh, the next day I was in the bathroom and I could feel, I could hear his uh, heart monitor. It's beeping, beeping, beeping. And I hear a flatline. Somebody knocks on the door and uh, they said, your dad just passed away. I'm in the bathroom with a needle in my arm. God gets me still. First time in my life. March 28th, 2017, I was sitting in jail, and uh, I was drying out. I started remembering the things that my dad was spe speaking over me and everything, and, and God was just orchestrating this whole this whole experience. And, and uh, I remember sitting down, writing a letter, crying out to God, and I'm like, look, if you're real, if you're real, show me something. Show me that my dad's still with me. And I, I'm writing this down in my letter. And as I, I walk upstairs, I lay my pen down, and I walk upstairs, and there was a pastor that had been coming to the jail for four years. Four years, never missed a Thursday. He come every Thursday, like clockwork. Well, it was, this was a Friday. He was sitting in a hospital room with an elder sharing the gospel, and God spoke to his heart, so you need to get down to the jail and share the gospel with somebody. So... God is so good. I'm coming down the steps and I notice his shoes. He had the same shoes on as my dad. He had the same khaki pants, same belt. His flannel shirt that my dad always wore was tucked in the same way. I mean, it's like my dad was standing in front of me. His mustache was trimmed the same way. He had the same eyes. Um, he had his watch turned to the inside of his wrist. I mean, everything to a T was like my dad was standing there in front of me. I walk up to this man and he reaches out. My dad always had a way when he shook hands with me. He placed his left hand over ours and he'd wink at me and say, I love you, son. And so I walk up to this pastor and first time I ever met him, never, never met the man in my life. I walk up to him, he shakes my hand, places his left hand over ours. He winks at me and says, I love you, son. And I knew right then that the creator of all this stopped heard me crying out and sent that man in there to share the gospel with me. So I got saved that day. The first time in my life I, I experienced an exhilarating feeling of freedom. Even though I was still behind bars, I was so free. I was so free, and I began to uh, I began to just read, to get into the Word, just 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 speak the Word over my life, just begin to pray and fast, and, and I remember I would pray and fast every Wednesday and Sunday, and God started speaking to me, and, and I remember all these things my dad prophesied over me about you're gonna you're gonna do something great for our family, you wanna be a leader. I start having these revelations while I was in jail. I started having these revelations, and, I, and I, God started giving me these downloads and, and things that I felt like He wanted me to go out and to accomplish for His glory, for His kingdom, to advance His kingdom here on earth. I got out of jail. Before I got out, though, you know, I knew something was different about me. All the guys down there playing spades, cutting up, playing poker, cussing, talking about the same things, telling war stories. I was upstairs. I was reading my Bible. Apply for this removal ride. I have felony convictions on my record, and they told me, like, you can't. You can't ride the bike because you, you got a record. And so I was a little prideful, I was a little bitter, and I was like, you know what, if you ain't gonna let me ride it, I'll run it. And uh, 
I be, I ran 40 in 40 days. I ran 777 miles. We started running into broken chain links laying on the side of the road as we were, you know, as we were running and whatnot, and at very significant times too. That was a huge message that we shared the whole entire time was just uh, how God is a chain breaker. I can't help but throw my hands up because I'm so thankful for the grace and mercy that he has shown me. Both of us was on any drug that you could think of and God took us and he's like, no, I, I have something greater for you. I've always struggled with acceptance. I've never really knew where my place was on this earth. You know, I had so many different ways I was being pulled. I wanted to be like this person or I wanted to be like that person. And so many times we're trying to be like somebody else. And we're not trying to be who God created us to be. And this past year has just been such an incredible journey for me. Figuring out who Caitlin is. Who did God create me to be? I graduated valedictorian. You know, I, I came from a good family. I was a good kid, but I was masking so much. I was hiding behind that painted picture of like I had everything under control. And I even had myself fooled at times. Like I can handle this. Why me? Why do you continue to save me? I'm not lucky. I'm not that lucky to be able to escape death that much. You know, like God had a plan and a purpose for me. The last time I went to jail, you know, this officer, he he told me uh, uh, my middle name is Hope. And he said, Caitlin Hope, more like Caitlin Hopeless. But at that time, I was hopeless and I was hurting so bad inside because at that time, you know, I was hopeless. But what, what, what would it look like if he had told me that I was amazing? And so I do my best each and every single day to tell somebody and ask them, hey, has somebody told you today that you're amazing? Because you don't know what that person's going through. You don't know what kind of struggles they're going through, you know, and it, and you might be the person that God is trying to send but too many times we're distracted. Man, we're world changers. I see so many world changers sitting here. And it only takes one little ripple. And that's what Res Hope is about. We're gonna continue to encourage people. We're gonna continue to lift others up. We're gonna continue to, to, to be that fire that God created us to be. I was talking about like figuring out who God created me to be. Because we all work are created on purpose for a purpose and y'all as i was riding my bike today i was like god what the heck am i doing like i'm so scared i'm truly scared about this journey that we're about to embark on and i'm like man and then god was like you're okay i've got you i'm gonna give you the strength to overcome this but it's beyond me you know, it's beyond me because it's the people that we're going to touch by doing the things that we're doing. It's the light that we're going to bring by going into these dark places. You know, God created us to love people and that's, that's who I am. That's my purpose is to love, to love as much as I can. And I think everybody should be entitled to hope. And as believers, we are the hope for His glory. We have, we have to to make sure that we're carrying that spirit, carrying that love. But that biblical hope, that's hope you can stand on. Take a leap of faith. I'm telling you, y'all. <laughs> Pray for me when I'm biking and running out here because this is a giant leap of faith for me. <laughs> so we'll start our journey um, on the 24th. We're going to ask y'all to come along beside us in prayer. Um, if you could follow us on Facebook, we're going to be starting from Sumas, Washington, to Tecate, California. <laughs> Give it up for five. Oh, God. I'm a person in long term recovery. I'm a recovery champion. I'm a strong woman of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a wife, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. Don't let labels define you. But our vision, not our dream, our vision, <laughs> is we're going to take Res Hope to different reservations. And we're going to help 
our brothers and sisters, you know, but, but along the way, we're helping everyone, you know, that's what God called us to do. But for now, that's a huge, that's our vision, is we want to take Res Hope to different, uh, different places across the nation. And so along the Pacific Coast Round and Bike, we're going to be uh, stopping at different reservations, making, breaking ground. Man, this has been such an amazing day that's just filled me. <laughs> From every single person that got up here and spoke, I just receiving. I just want to pray over everybody. We're gonna finish it up and let Joanne and John get up here. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Thank you for uh, your your goodness and your mercy, Father. Um, right now, I just pray for uh, pray for this this venue, this land. I pray for Mike and Vicky for you just continue to uh, speak to their hearts, Lord, and just continue to uh, to lay out the um, the grace and provision for them to carry out the vision that you've laid on their heart, Lord. Everybody that's here today, Father, I pray that you uh, you just pour out a fresh anointing, a fresh uh, a fresh spirit, Lord, and a new season in their lives, Lord. I pray that you just continue to lead God and direct us in all that we do and say. Uh, keep placing people in front of us, Lord, that we can show your uh, your glory, your love, your I pray for salvation, Lord, for in our lives and our ministries right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for many lives to be changed. Um, everybody that comes here today, that they're inspired to go out and just make a noise for you, God. So I just want to thank you in advance for what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to continue to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.